Noah and the Ark. Before this story, we were told the story of humanity's first bloodshed, Cain and Abel. Cain's hatred for God and jealousy of his brother led to the brutal murder of Abel. But evil did not stop with Cain. Evil continued its reign over the hearts of man. God, for the good of humanity, now has a plan for purification and redemption. Inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. As we begin today's story, we find that since Cain was cursed to wander the earth, humankind has multiplied, spreading out across the earth as God had intended. But something else is also growing, evil. It is a theme that's repeated throughout the Old Testament. Evil is reigning in the hearts of man, and that is not at all what God wants. Each new generation is growing more and more evil. Sin is spreading like wildfire until finally God has had enough. He cannot ignore the depravity any longer. God is grieved at what has become of humanity. He is ready to wipe mankind off the face of the earth. With a great flood, he's going to wash the earth clean of evil humanity. But there is one man who is different. Noah, we're told, was righteous in God's eyes. It must have been extremely challenging for Noah to live a righteous life in the midst of such rampant evil. Like Noah, you may often feel surrounded by evil in our world today, and like Noah, you must stand apart from those living to satisfy their own desires. As you listen today, think about how Noah and his family must have felt building this giant ark. They'd never before even seen rain or experienced a flood. Think about the immense amount of faith this required. Imagine the fear in their hearts as they entered the ark and watched God close the door. But then watch as God carries them through the flood, protecting them from all harm and providing for them every step of the way. Let's listen now to the story about a man, an ark, a great flood, and God's plan of redemption for a world filled with evil. Mankind multiplied, with more people filling the earth, more opportunities for evil abounded. Sons and daughters of Cain established corrupt kingdoms. Men treated women as property, and the twisted hearts of people cast the world into darkness. Even the lives of people began to shorten, and humans were dying earlier and earlier. Mighty men of old would steal away women and rape them. These things God would not ignore. The actions of people at this time reflected a broken and corrupt heart. God saw this wickedness and regretted greatly the state of humanity. In sorrow he said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land. Yet out of this twisted generation, There was one man named Noah, who was righteous in God's eyes. God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. The wrath of God would descend in the form of rain, and water from beneath the earth would come after. This was God's punishment, the flood was coming. God instructed Noah and his sons to build an ark, a mighty vessel that would preserve him, his wife, his sons, and their wives from the coming storm. Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, built the ark exactly as God had instructed. He also instructed Noah that he should bring every animal with them in pairs and keep them alive in the ark. Even now, God was making promises to redeem the world. Noah fearfully and obediently followed every instruction that God gave him. When the time had come for the flood to begin, God told Noah, Go into the ark and take your family with you. The rain will fall for forty days and forty nights. It will destroy the land and all those who live on it, but your family and all the animals that come to you will be saved. 
When Noah's family and all the animals were secured in the ark, God shut the door. Seven days later, the rain began to fall, and the cleansing power of God opened. Water fell from the skies, and the springs of the earth burst open violently. The water rose, covering the mountains and washing away all the corrupt and evil kingdoms built by the wickedness of mankind. God once breathed life into mankind, and now he took their breath away. All was destroyed, all but those on the ark. After forty days had passed, the raining ceased, and the earth was still underwater for a hundred and fifty days. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had receded enough for the ark to land on the side of a mountain. After four months had passed, Noah opened a window and sent out a raven to find dry land, but the raven never returned. Noah then sent out a dove to seek out dry land, and it returned because there was no dry land for it to perch on. Seven days later he sent the dove out again, and it came back with an olive leaf, meaning that the dove had found dry land and came back. Noah waited another seven days and sent the dove out again hopeful that it would not return, meaning the land was ready to live on. This time it didn't return, so no one knew that the water was not covering the earth anymore. After a month had passed, Noah opened the door and saw that the land was dry. God beckoned Noah to come out of the ark, so Noah brought his family and the animals out of the ark and offered a sacrifice to the Lord, just as Abel did before them. God was pleased to receive their offering and vowed to never flood the earth again. So God gave Noah permission to eat animals and plants so they might multiply the earth again. With the newness of life, God put a rainbow in the sky as a symbol of his promises. The story of evil does not end here, but the story of God and his passion to preserve and protect those he loves is still unfolding. Evil abounds, but the promises of God prevail still. As the story of Noah begins, we get a picture of just how bad things can and do get when mankind follows only their own heart. Just four chapters removed from when everything was perfect in the Garden of Eden, the world is in disarray, death, violence, abuse. God simply cannot, will not allow evil to go unchecked. He will not stand idly by and watch the world he created be destroyed by sinful men. There had to be a reckoning, a judgment, and we see here in today's story what God's righteous, holy anger can do. The truth is, we're all deserving of such a flood of judgment for the evil and sin in our own hearts. But God is full of mercy and compassion. And here in the story of Noah, we see that he is making a way for his ultimate plan of redemption to be carried out. We are not told much about Noah other than the most important thing, that he was walking in a right relationship with God. He was not perfect. He was also touched by the sin nature passed down from Adam, but he was righteous in the sight of God, righteous in God's eyes. The book of Hebrews in the New Testament tells us that it was Noah's faith in God that made him righteous. He took God at his word even when he had never seen what God told him was coming. Look at how God delivers the news to Noah. First the bad, then the good. Genesis 6, verses 17 through 19. Now behold, I myself am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which there is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. God made a covenant, a promise with Noah. He and his family would be safe, along with the animals that were on the ark. And through Noah's family, God was going to save a remnant of humanity to start afresh and even the animal world as well. 
but first came the flood. For 40 days it rained. Waters rose and destroyed every person not on the ark, just as God had said. But it wasn't over. Noah and his family stayed on the ark for a full year. God provided rescue for Noah and his family during the flood and provision far after the flood. Isn't that the way we see it in our lives as well? God is with us during the storm and through the storm. He stays with us, providing for our every need through the aftermath of the storm. When it was finally safe to step outside, what did Noah do? He offered a sacrifice to God, worshiping him, thanking him for his protection, his presence, his provision, and his mercy and grace. And God gave Noah a beautiful sign of his covenant, a rainbow in the sky. The story of Noah is a powerful reminder that God, even in his anger, loves his children and offers salvation and new life to those who put their faith and trust in him. This was a fresh start, but sadly not the end of sin and evil. That would take a much bigger act, a sacrifice only God himself can offer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this story that shows the consuming power of your righteousness and justice for sin. Thank you also for what it shows us about your loving heart to save those who trust in you. Help us, as Noah did, to have faith in you through Jesus Christ and follow you wherever you lead. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.